Evolution teaches that early Earth was a hellish, uninhabitable planet formed over eons of time from meteor and volcanic activity. Then, the great oxygen event happened, and Earth became habitable. This is when the first life arose, billions of years ago in the sea, from a small bacteria-like creature. One bacteria ate another. Life started to branch out. Chaos, violence, cannibalism, and death. This is evolution. Meanwhile, in scripture, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and all that is in them. Man was placed in a garden of Eden, a paradise on a planet created specifically for mankind, and given access to the tree of life, granting him immortality. As for the angels themselves, they had heaven, and access to the very throne of God itself. One day, greed struck the heart of one of God's creation, the one today known as the devil, who wanted the throne of God for himself. He turned a third of all of the angels against God to help him obtain the throne in rebellion. God looked and saw his child filled with envy, greed, and pride, saying, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the top of the clouds, and I will make myself the Most High. However, God is loving and just, and he knew that to destroy his creation because of rebellion would cause all of creation to only obey God out of fear and not love. So God had a plan to cast the devil to earth and give him to man 
and show all of creation what would happen if man chose to sin. It tells us in Ezekiel, saying, You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor, and I cast you to earth. I made you a spectacle before kings. This way, God would not have to kill his child because of rebellion, and then have to try and explain the dangers of sin to his creation. Rather, he will let sin speak for itself and show how bad it is, so that all of creation can see and understand when God destroys the devil, why he had to, and there will be no question as to why. Look at what the world has become. All of this is because we chose to disobey the one who created us and loves us. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree that God told them not to, humans started to grow old, and this became known as the fall of man. Before this, we had access to the tree of life that granted mankind the ability to live forever. But then they lied to God. Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden of God once and for all. Plants began to grow thorns and thistles, and all of creation groaned in despair. At that time, though, humans were still new, so they didn't have the health problems that we have in the world today. But as time went on, aging got worse and worse, and lifespans got shorter and shorter. Mankind began to turn on one another. Animals that once got along were now enemies and would kill and eat one another. God saw his creation and how evil it had become and decided to start over. He chose Noah and his family to restart the world. He gave them over 100 years to build a boat and warn all of the people on earth at that time of the coming judgment. But no one listened. So during that time, Noah gathered up all of the animals on the ark, and he sealed it shut. The rains began to fall, and the earth began to shake. The fountains of the great deep broke forth, and the flood began. Near the end of the flood, the mountains were formed. The flood waters subsided. He and his family remained on the ark for many months. He set out a dove to see when the dry land was near. One day it returned with an olive branch, and he knew that the flood was finally over. The waters began to recede from the earth and after 150 days, the water had gone down. On the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, and the waters continued to recede until the 10th month. This was around 4,400 years ago today. It was at this time that most of Earth's geologic column was finally formed and visible. It was Noah's flood that created most of the layers we see on Earth today, not deep time evolution. All of the animals got off the ark and started migrating around the world. One example of this is that of the sloth. Before the flood, sloth were huge. Not even a lion could hurt them. They were afraid of nothing. Remember, the world before the flood was much better than it is today. It made animals live much longer and grow much larger. A sloth could grow up to 6,000 pounds, as big as an elephant. But then the flood came. And the Ice Age began.
sloth got off the ark and started to populate all over again. Before, they used to walk around safely and live on the ground, but now they are forced to live in the trees all the time just to stay safe and are awake during the night instead of during the day because it is safer. They are called nocturnal because of this. About 150 years after the flood, mankind went back to their old ways. This time, they were building a tower to heaven. You see, the Babylonians wanted to make a name for themselves by building a mighty city and a tower which top could reach into the heavens. God saw their evil intent and he disrupted the work by confusing the language of the workers that they could no longer understand one another. Confused and angry, they left with their families to find new land, untrustworthy of their neighbor. This story actually tells us that God taught Adam language in the beginning, just as he taught humans a different language instantly in this story. Language is not learned, it is acquired. The opposite of what evolution says. Evolution is going to tell you that man came from a missing link common ancestor and that we split from chimpanzees around seven million years ago. They will say that we are apes but let me ask you, was your grandma human? Was your great-grandma human? How far back do you go before your great-grandma's grandma was no longer human? The Bible says God created mankind in his image. But if mankind can change his image over time, from non-human to human, then God has no image, and the verse makes no sense. God is not a God of confusion. Humans have always been human, and primates have always been primates. It's that simple. subscribe button because we are just getting started.